I have thought about it. Okay, well, it has the bad acting and cinematography of that, albeit a little less sexist and a little more racist, and add in bizarre random dance routines. Sounds like fun. Oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> There's this one scene where the main guy is all mad and broody. He starts doing this dance that's supposed to be an homage to Footloose, I think? Anyway, she's doing really angry pirouettes, and the director clearly thinks he's being artistic, when in reality, the guy just looks like an idiot. I'll have to make Isaac watch it this thing. You should join us when we do. You sure? Of course, bad movies are always better with friends. Thank you. Thank you. I really needed this. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of your birthday, Catherine. Thank you. See you later, Ben. Catherine's about to open the door when she stops herself. Maybe turning the knob. Wait, how did you know it's my birthday? Oh, uh, uh, Facebook. Yeah, it popped up on Facebook this morning. Okay. Well, thanks. Take care, Ben. Catherine opens the door to her room as Ben turns to leave. The light in the hall shines behind them, allowing the shadows to enter the room before them. Even the shadows can feel the tension in the air. The pleasant atmosphere of the hallway mixes the anxiety of Catherine's room to make something uncertain. Catherine steps into her room and Ben starts to exit. When the lights go on in Catherine's room, we meet several people, including Isaac. Surprise! Oh my god! Uh, ben, were you in on this? Uh, Isaac kind of asked me to let him know when we were heading back. Uh, Believe this. Do you like it? I hate you. Do you so uh, you like it? Maybe. <laughs> Good, because you haven't even seen the best part yet. I should hear it's back off the light rooms, the room's lights, and turns on some col colorful LED party lights. He reaches for a smartphone, and party music starts to play in the background. Everyone slowly starts to dance as the entire scene turns into a full blown party. Catherine quickly notices that all this time, Ben has been standing awkwardly in the door, unsure what he should do. She gestures for him to come inside, but he remains hesitant. Come on, it'll be fun! I don't want to be a bother. Ben, you're not a bother. You're my guest. Come on in. <clears throat> Catherine joins the party doors and melts with the essence. Ben's phone rings. It's Adam again. He, con he considers the scene and the call for a moment, feeling the tension in the air, before putting his phone away and stepping through the doorway. There's a, beautiful There's a brief flash into Adam's reality. He's crying on the floor corner of her room, holding his phone as if it were his last chance for warmth. He's desperate. The flash ends. Ben enters the party, leaves the door open and moves inward. The party continues, while his par body parts fly everywhere with breathless abandon as a small group of individuals become less human and more animalistic. They dance, they drink, someone kisses one person and then a completely different person and no one cares. In the middle of this is Ben, letting the settings follow him. He feels warm, even though he has had nothing to drink. Ferdinand and Andrew appear in a flash to their own reality, similar to that of Adam's. The two of them are interweaved with each other, a tableau of desperation and eroticism. Ben seems to see the glimpse into Ferdinand's world for an instant, but all too quickly it fades, both on stage and from his consciousness. The action continues. There's a brief moment where the surrounding party seems to slow in time, as Isaac approaches Catherine. How do you like your party? I love it. How did you even get in here to set this all up? I've got a friend that works in residential. Make sure to thank them for me. And thank you. I love you. I love you too. Catherine and Isaac kiss. How did the audition go? Ugh, it was terrible. By far, one of the worst auditions I've ever had. You always had. say that and you always do. No, this one was actually horrendous. Well, what went wrong? I was flat singing my song, I was nervous reading my monologue, and to make matters worse in the middle of it, the guy sitting there st goes, start again, but this time, we it as if you're a good actress. Oh, and try a smile. You've got to be kidding me. I swear, I had, I had half a mind thrown out right then and there. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Thanks. Ben and I got a quick bite after him. He let me land and jumped. Slightly after the mention of his name, Ben starts to notice the conversation Isaac and Catherine are having. He starts to swim against the current of the party in order to listen closer, although he is unable to hear the entire discussion. He's a good guy. I know. You should invite him to hang out more often. I try. Well, clearly, you need to try harder than me. Hey, it's not exactly easy, you know. Ben's a shy guy. It's hard to get him to do much of anything. I got him to come to the party, didn't I? You, my love, are enchantress. Capable of luring the most anxious of individuals into participating in activities they would never imagine themselves otherwise doing. Ah. It's true. Look into my eyes and tell me if I'm lying. Catherine sarcastically stares into Isaac's eyes. 
After a moment, a devilish grin runs across Catherine's face as she grabs onto Isaac, pulls him into a dip, and kisses him. The tender moment feels like it goes on for an eternity, even though in reality, it only lasted a few seconds. Catherine pulls Isaac back up and lets go. Isaac takes a moment to recover. I'll take that as a sign that you believe me. You're impossible. I'm honest. Well, Mr. Honest, if you really believe what you say, then I suppose I'll just have to be the one to invite Ben over next time. What's her name? Good. Now, I believe you owe me a dance, mister. Works for me. Catherine returns Isaac's smile and turns on Peppier dance music. The two of them return to the clump of party goers. Ben, having watched the entire discussion, now has a fairly prominent smile on his face. Ben's phone rings again. It's Adam. Without more than a second of thought, Ben ignores Adam's call. There's another flash into his world, and we see Adam curled up on the floor with paper and pen next to him. He's written out the entirety of a note, but still hoping to be saved. He's scared. Ben doesn't notice. The flash fades. The party continues, but Ben pulls away for a second towards the door. He's not trying to leave, just still in a pleasant stupor from overhearing Isaac and Catherine. He sits down against the door frame and looks on at the party doors, almost as if watching the film. It feels good to be wanted. Just as Ben starts to speak, Laura walks by the room. She's clearly uncomfortable with how loud the party is and tries to walk past quickly, but overhears Ben and stops. Ben? Uh, Alura, what are you doing here? Uh, you invited me over? Shit. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I was waiting downstairs for like 20 minutes before I just looked up your room number. It completely slipped my mind that we were hanging out. Yeah, clearly. I suck, I know. Please don't be mad. Fine. I will de-escalate from angry to perturbed. Now let's go. We have some writing to do. Allura starts to exit, expecting Ben to join her. He does not. Oh. Allura stops. Oh? The thing is, I'm kind of busy at the moment. Rising back to angry. If you want, you could join the party too. I'm sure my friends wouldn't mind. I came to write, Ben, not to party. That's a pretty radical adjustment to make at a moment's notice, don't you think? I was able to do it. Oh, good. Congratulations. I'm glad to hear you can adapt so easily, but I can't. I'm sorry. Have you talked to about... Have you thought about talking to a psychiatrist about that? I don't need more drugs, Ben, especially not for a minor case of social anxiety. It sounds more than minor, Laura. I'm no expert, but if meds could help... It's... I don't need meds for this because it isn't a fucking problem. There's a difference between illness and personality, Ben. This, this world isn't me anymore. I gave it up when I met Emma. I don't belong in it. I can pretend that that takes time to prepare, and that's not because of illness. That's because of who I am. There's nothing wrong with who I am. I'm sorry. I don't care. The Laura starts to exit. Laura, wait. I'll text you when I'm ready to forgive you. The Laura exits, leaving Ben alone in the hallway. The party continues to rage on the side, but Ben can't seem to move. He manages to slump against the door frame to Catherine's room, all inside, and collapses to the floor. The dark place is approaching. Ben's phone rings. Adam again. With minimal energy, Ben picks it up. There's a light on Adam that lasts longer than the usual flash, showing him on the floor in a ball. He has the written note by his side and a chair next to him. I can't talk now, Adam. I'll call you later. Ben! Ben hangs I... up on the phone without hearing what he has Without hearing what was trying to say. Lights down on Adam. Ben continues to sew. After a moment, Isaac notices Ben and goes up to him. Ben is too absorbed in his own world to notice Isaac approaching. You okay there, Ruby? Really? I don't think so. Why? What happened? I think I hurt my friend. What do you mean? Catherine notices Isaac hovering over the door and walks over. Hey, what's going on? Ben says he hurt a friend. What do you mean? I don't know. He hasn't said yet. Ben, what do you mean you bought your friend? I said some things I shouldn't have. Uh, I'm sorry, Ben. I I'm sure it wasn't that bad, though. I, I don't know. I think she feels betrayed. I guess you can relate to her in that way. What do you mean? Ben! Catherine, what is he talking about? He, uh, uh, uh I, I can't do this right now. Catherine runs off, almost like if about to collapse. After confusion and concern, Isaac runs after her, completely forgetting about Ben, who is left alone, still slumped on the door frame. The party boards continue to flash out inside, unaware that their host and hostess have both run off into the night. I'm... I'm so... The party fades. 
Ben desperately reaches for his phone and starts to call Perdita as the dark place begins to envelop him. He needs her to tell him that everything's going to be all right. He needs her. Andrew picks up the phone, completely aware of who is calling. Is this Ben? Yes, who are Ben has moved on. So should you. Ben opens his mouth to speak, but Andrew hangs up before he can get another word out. In shock and despair, Ben is unable to even close his jaw. He tucks his head into his chest as the dark place covers him whole. He is alone. Ben's phone rings. Lights up on Adam, calling Ben. Adam is standing on the chair previously placed with a noose tied around his neck. He doesn't move. Ben doesn't pick up the phone. The phone rings out like a heartbeat, pulsing, and just as it ends, instead of a voicemail message, a long, extended buzz is heard. The world is frozen. Blackout. End of act. Act two. Scene one. Practice room. Flashback. Lights up on, pen, on, on Ben at a piano. He's at the practice room in his old high school. It's his sophomore year. Ben is trying to work on his piano skills, which are so hard at best. Adam enters without Ben realizing it as he continues to attempt to play the piano. Adam watches Ben for a few minutes before slow clapping sarcastically. Do you think you could do any better? I could give it a try? Be my guest. Adam sits down and plays the song beautifully, even adding his own players. Ben is beyond impressed, his jaw having dropped very early into the piece. That was amazing, thanks! Although that wasn't exactly my first time playing the song. It doesn't take a prodigy to play something as well after countless hours of practice. Okay, smartass. How about this one? Ben pulls out sheet music and shows it to Adam. It isn't for Perdita, but a completely different song altogether. He reads it over for a second, analyzing the notes thoroughly. I've never seen this one before. Is it new? You could say that. Then go ahead. Try it. Alright. Okay, let's give this a shot. Adam plays Ben's song. It isn't perfect, but it's much better than Ben could play it. Not my best work, but what do you think? Well, certainly. Got the general idea of the piece down. Although, not too much flair. Still though, it's more than most people have asked. I'll take that as a compliment. So who's the piece by anyway? Well, me actually.